Hi and welcome to this video which updates an old lecture of mine on using Google more effectively. Uh, the lecture won't be given in class in the future and this video is provided as a reverse classroom resource. Um, a later video in this series will look at some less well-known tools in Google and how they can help with your learning. But first let's have a think about some problems on the internet. One problem is that people on the internet want to sell you things. There are many sites selling vitamin pills for example. These probably won't do people much harm, except perhaps their bank balance. Uh, the pills can be quite expensive. The other pills shown here are a rather bad idea. They claim to produce weight loss. Unfortunately, they are very dangerous and people have died from taking them. The websites that sell them don't mention this, of course. Uh, now, as for Google, here's something you really need to know. Controversial? Not really. Google sells advertising, not searches. This is why it is free to you. Okay, Google is in fact a very good general search company, but its business model impacts on its use in a number of ways, as we'll see soon. Google influences searches in a couple of ways. Firstly, it tries to direct you to pages put up by advertisers. So even a search for information about the HPLC chemical analysis method We'll bring up a list of companies selling systems and sundries, which is probably not what a student was looking for. Um, as you can imagine, there's even more of a problem in areas such as nutrition and health. The second issue is that Google gets to know you and puts you in what is called a filter bubble, based on your previous searches. This can be very useful, but it does mean you may must miss some important sites. Um, here's a couple of examples. If I search the word nutrition, Google actually finds mostly good sources. This is because I've accessed these sites before and Google has remembered it. Here's another example, a search for the word yes. Most people would not get these results, which are about the English rock group yes. I get these results because Google knows me and knows that I have very good musical taste. Back in 2011, there was quite a kerfuffle among what are known as power users of Google when it was discovered that the Plus operator, well, no longer operated. The Plus operator allows searches such as nutrition plus cost, which would find web pages containing both words. That no longer works. This was about the same time as Google introduced its Google Plus social network. That wasn't a coincidence. And is another example of Google being not so much a search company, but it's has an advertising company. Um, this is a pity. The Plus operator has been around since database, database searching began, and you will find it in many academic search engines, for example. Uh, so let's talk a little bit briefly before we go on about other logical operators. These are the logical operators. They link words in searches, or in the case of not, exclude words. Uh, the best way to think about them is to try some examples such as these shown here. Uh, first we'll look at how these work in academic search engines such as Science Direct and then how to achieve this in Google. So here, here are some examples which would work in Science Direct for example. The first example finds items or web pages that contain both words nutrition and cooking. The second finds web pages that will include a the word, and the third and fourth use the, use the not operator, which excludes the word following not. So you can search for nutrition without finding any information which includes the word cooking, for example, from the from the first example. That's how academic search engines work. Here are the equivalent Google search terms. They work. They work very nicely, but only if you know how to use them properly. Here's something that's important for all search engines, not just Google. When you're searching for a phrase, it's always, it is always a good idea to include it in quotes. So here's a search for the effects of biogenic amines, which finds about 41,000 results. That's a lot of results. However, if you had searched for the same phrase without the quotes, you get well over half a million results because Google is searching for all the words or at least the words effects, biogenic and amines, rather than the phrase. So putting things in quotes dramatically reduced the number of results that were obtained and made the results probably more pertinent. 
This is a good website if you want to know more about the basics of Boolean operators, and you really should. Academic search engines have much more information how to use searches like this effectively, so check in search engines like um, Science Direct or Scopus. Well, cards. In most search engines, you can replace, replace a word or part of a word with a character such as an asterisk. This asterisk, not him. Google doesn't support the normal use of wildcards in something called truncation, which can be a bit confusing if you're coming from an academic, academic search engine background. Here's an example of how truncation works in many search engines, but not Google. Trun trun truncating, I beg your pardon, a partial term such as nutri will bring up results for nutrition, nutritionist and nutritional. Google will only find the results for Nutri, of which there are many, uh, few of which are probably much concrete use of students studying nutrition, for example. And there are some of the examples of the sort of results you'll get from Google. Um, this is a bit odd, given the importance of quotes generally in Google, but you can use the asterisk to ask natural language questions such as this one. The results are a bit unpredictable, but it might help you occasionally. Uh, there are other tricks you can do using wildcards, and you should search for the information yourself if you're interested. Site search is one of the most useful things in Google. The ability to search within a particular website is one of the most under underappreciated but useful things available. We often know which site holds the information we need to find, but finding it can be a big problem. Uh, if you want to search, for example, about the horse meat scandal in the Food Standards Agency's website, you might try a search like this one. It won't work, well, it won't work particularly well, because it is finding pages with the two phrases you want, not limiting the search just to the FSA web pages. This search will find information about My Little Pony Burgers, but only from the Food Standards Agency. The important text here is a site colon food.gov.uk. Um, note there's no space after the colon and before the web address. Note also you must use the top level of the website, in this case the home page of the FSA. If you try to use a search further down the site, the search won't work properly. I beg your pardon, if you try to use a web address further down the site, the search won't work properly. Um, notice also in this case I didn't use quotes around horse meat. Uh, this is because the FSA uses a number of different variations of the word horse meat, sometimes use an example, a hyphen for example. Um, this is probably the optimum search term in this case. File type. Uh, again, another hugely useful Google facility. If you want to search for a particular file type and use that, in, uh, especially when you use it in combination with a site search, it can be very effective. So here we are searching for PDF documents about the horse meat scandal and from the FSA. Since most government reports are published in PDF form, this can be a very efficient way of finding official publications. Bear in mind, links will open up the document itself rather than the web page containing it. So make sure you're opening up from a, uh, a proper government, in this case, website, so you know you're not, not going to have any problems with downloading various nasties. A list of the file types you can search for are going to be found here. As I mentioned, you should always check the web page that the document is on. Is it safe? And this is a, another good reason why using file type and site search together is a very good idea. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for listening. I hope that was useful.